Hello everybody, it's Nim and welcome back to my channel. So today is the second episode of our Red Tail Zoo. And the Red Tail Zoo is the new zoo that we started. Um, this will be the first official building video. Last week we did a map forming video and I explained to you the entire purpose of the zoo in that video. So, you know, I won't be explaining that much about it anymore in this video. Because um, if you have watched the previous video, you are not going to want to hear it twice but just in case you didn't just a small recap um we are building a asia tropical inspired zoo and that's basically all you need to know so we're going to use a lot of wood a lot of brown textures a bit of modern architecture as well and we are actually starting off with the entrance today plus a habitat also um sometimes you will hear me drinking my cup of tea because i have a bit of a sore throat um, I'm actually, you know, kind of ill as well, so um, apologies, sometimes you will hear me sipping my cup of tea, but you know what, I'm ignore that and just watch the pretty video instead. So we are going to start off with the main entrance. And unlike I usually do, I build the main entrance not at the beginning of the park, but in the middle of the park, because, um, you know, it is such an amazing and different map than I've ever built on and I wanted to do something different for this zoo so it's going to be a bit different I want to use a lot of glass to have like natural uh, light textures and we are also going to use this I believe it was an, um, a wooden panel roof and the panels are still black right now but we are going to change that up for other colors in a minute we are gonna make them a uh, woodish and kind of the same color like the wood beams that you also have now, I'm not the best builder, I'm gonna say it right there, I'm not the best, but I did my best and originally I wanted something to be, I don't know, kind of like Jurassic Park entrance. Didn't work out the way I wanted it, but actually I feel like in the end it, it worked out quite a bit. I had, for this video I had around three to four hours of footage. And I cut it into like a half an hour video with obviously some cinematics, but I think it did quite good. So one of these sides, or like the left side, is going to be where we have the um, platforms, so the entrance platforms and a little shop. And then on the right side, we will have a little visitor center. And if I say visitor center, I basically mean, you know, some food shops uh, and a hats fantastic, I believe I put there, so like a gift shop. And that's it, that, that's what I mean with it. I'm calling it a visitor center, but you all know what I mean. We are gonna use the glass roofing on there, the one that's like around it. Just, you know, because I felt like it looks pretty. I wanted to use it, I really felt like it was kind of necessary to have like a lot more natural light. And I know that it looks kind of awkward right now, but I've been building this zoo for quite a bit now. I've done a lot of pre-recording, um, you know, because I had time and building in Planet Zoo takes me quite a while to be honest I'm still gonna have to get used to it it's not like in the sims where I can just smash out these videos which I'm actually quite good at and I have to say I'm, I'm getting better with the path system so I wanted this natural sandy looking path and we are gonna use the grid on this um, just because I, I like things being straight and precise and I'm kind of weird like that but I love it especially with if it all aligns up and I'm really happy that it does like I tried my best to make it line up everything and I think I actually did quite a good job at succeeding so here we are gonna place our first shop and I wanted this to be like a ticket information box so obviously we don't have ticket stands in the game but we're gonna pretend it's a ticket stand so it's actually an information booth and we are gonna use the bamboo to line everything up and I believe that we were using the um, Arctic, no, not Arctic, the, what is it called, the, I want to say Asian, but I'm not sure if it is, like the Asian roof, I'm going to call it the Asian roof, because I'm not actually sure if it is, but I imagine that, that it would be like that, so, and then we are going to use these Asian uh, pieces, um, just to write stuff on it, so we are trying to find a new one, and we're going to have, like, tickets, and they can buy zoo tours here, so we're gonna type here, we're going to have an information desk, tickets, and zoo tours. 
And I actually think that it worked out quite nice, especially when we are doing some scenery next to it, which we are going to do in a minute. So we are going to make sure that there are some nice um, objects that are like perfect for that. So we're going to have these. Well, first of all, we're going to place the bell. And when I placed the bell, I wasn't quite sure if I want to make this like an entrance or like a viewing point that they had to go to the visitor center or they could choose. In the end, so like I made them choose for it and we are going to have like this go car. I say go car, but just, you know, just a normal class reading. We're going to put some um, Asian stuff on it. It feels so weird like saying Asian stuff, but you guys know what I mean. Like those pieces of clothing and all of that. We're going to put some fruit there. Just to make it look like this is like a market where you can buy stuff. And I really wanted to go for that illusion because I, I I felt it was the vibe of the zoo. And like sure, it doesn't look that good now. But wait until you see when it's finished. Like I always have that feeling when I'm building a zoo. Like I start building, I'm like, man, this looks crap. This is really not the vibe that I want to go for. This looks awful. How on earth could I build this? What am I even doing? And then when I finished, I actually think it looks quite nice. And I have to be honest, I built this first, uh, like the entrance in the first habitat. And then immediately after that, I built um, the second habitat. So that will be, video will be posted next week. And I think that with the second habitat, it actually looks way more complete and way more finished. So don't judge me too hard after seeing this habitat and the entrance. I did my best. Next week will be better. Okay, guys, I promise you that. So don't worry, it will be better. Also, I still have a cold, um, I'm sorry, so if I suddenly sound really, really like I'm like full everywhere, you know why, it's not like I'm emotional about my own building, it's just because I have a cold. That's the thing, like, um, you can't even normally sneeze in public now. I went to the store, and like, um, there was something in my throat, so I coughed, and then everyone was looking at me, and I was like, okay, I feel like I'm a social pariah at the moment, what the heck is this? Really annoying. Same with sneezing, um, I have these, this automatic uh, response that when it's cold, my nose gets itchy and I sneeze. That's like what I have had since a child. I can't stand being like in a, in a warm environment and then going into the cold and then I, I just sneeze. It's just how my nose works. I don't know why it just does that. And everyone just was looking at me weird. I was like, well, I'm sorry, okay, I know my own body. Um, I'm not ill or anything. It's just the reaction on the cold. I'm sorry. Anyhow. Let's go back to the build. So we are gonna place these vines, um, which I never actually used before. I, I don't think that I actually used them before. I actually really like the way that they make it look. It's make it looks like it is some really old native zoo. Same with all the plants and the rocks in there. I actually really like the way this looks. I'm quite proud of it. You know, and I, I know I said that before, but I'm really proud of how this works, especially with Bell as well. Hey, Bell as well, that rhymes, nice. And then with all the vines, man, I love it. Like, the good thing is, the guests, um, they don't usually, like, walk through it. Not all the time, at least, so. It actually works out pretty good. I did want to put the name of the zoo there, and usually, um, well, usually I do it as well with letters. I see a lot of people making, like, the separate signs and then having it next to the entrance on this really modern, like, wall. Um, I'm not that type of person. I love these letterings. I love letters in general, um. That's probably why I'm a teacher as well. So I had to do it. I did it the same with the Woodland Zoo. And I think I did it with the River Safari Zoo as well. The Australian Zoo, I didn't do letters. I didn't give it a name because it was just an Australian zoo. But with this, um, it actually has a name. So we uh, we got to use it. So right now we have two visitor centers. Well, like two, two uh, buildings. And I really want to make this uh, the visitor center, and then you notice that I actually built into the mountain, so I couldn't lower it, and you know what? We're just gonna work with it, like it's gonna look a little bit weird with the path thing, but you know what? We went for it, and it actually worked out pretty good, even if I say so myself. There you go, we fiddled with some path thing, but we managed to make it work. And that's the most important thing, isn't it? So in this little corner, um, we are going to put a hat fantastic. And at first I wanted to put it up there, but um, it didn't work. So then we are going to place it down there. I'm sorry, there's a weird cut in the audio video uh, footage. I don't know why, but my Adobe Premiere just um, stopped working. And I was really afraid that I lost some of the footage. Luckily I didn't, but it did mean I had to make a weird cut in the actual voiceover. But we managed and that's what's important. 
So right now we are just going to make sure that the exterior of these shops will actually fit in to the other uh, exteriors of the other shops in the information booths. We are just going to quickly copy over the roof because I have such a bad brain, I keep forgetting what I actually used. And then obviously we are going to make it look pretty because just this bamboo is kind of boring. And I know the first time I actually built oh, or I ever built in Planet Zoo, I did do it just like that and I didn't put any signs on. And I was like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. But you know what? Um, I like this way better. Like you, you live and you learn. And I learned a lot. I gotta say that I learned a lot. So right here, we're gonna have uh, three signs and actually two of those, I don't like those pictures for the animals you can see in this zoo. So we're gonna have the uh, Gulpi, the uh, Mulfritz, and then we're just gonna sign uh, buy here. So you actually buy it there, because you know it's important because they're good thing there and then they ha I had this big empty feature wall and I was like you know what I'm gonna put some fans on there some paintings whatever and then just some random plants in front of there and hope everything will work out great big gamble but in the end I actually think that it it turns out pretty good and turns out pretty great oh I feel like I, I feel I feel like I sound like I really have a cold and I, I'm my apologies. I don't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Um, anywho, I did some, some funny tricks with the plants as well. You will see that later and I'll explain it to you as well when we actually start on the habitat. Um, and I'll explain what I did. I did find out that actually it was some clipping through the building so I just placed a giant tree and you can you can never tell. You guys all saw nothing. Nothing happens here. It's all fine. So right now we are just copying over these vines because you know they looks pretty awesome. So we are doing them on the other side as well. And I actually really feel this vine vibe. I'm gonna use that on a lot of other buildings as well because you know, I feel it's, it's good. And obviously we are gonna have an exit sign because you need to know where the exit of the zoo is because um, I'm gonna make this a zoo where you can get easily lost in. So pay attention to the markers, otherwise you're gonna get lost. Just letting you guys know it. Pay attention to the markers and be careful or you might get lost and you don't want that. So behind this actual uh, entrance I'm gonna have this little staff village facility. Um, I'm not gonna show you a whole lot about it, it's just, you know, easy peasy lemon squeezy. I don't exactly know where I put it in the footage, so let me tell you guys, okay? So I built this entrance like, when was it, two weeks ago, I did the editing like a week ago and I'm doing the voiceover again a week after that. Um, might not be the best decision but I have time for it now because I have to stay home from work anyways because you know um, I have a call so I can't go to work. And I've been working from home and I figured out that uh, teaching from home with four and five year olds is really darn difficult. So that just means that I gave them all assignments and I hope that they actually did it. I really actually I I trust that they did the assignments, I can check it anyways. And then I did all the administration, and then I did some paperwork, and then I wrote some reports, and then I'm done. It actually goes way faster at home than it were to go do at my actual job, because then people talk to me and I talk to people. So, um, yeah. And you know, it is, after all, it is 4 p.m., so I would be almost done with work anyways. Right now we are creating this little uh, water scenery. I didn't want to make it like too big because if you watched the previous video, there is already a shitload of uh, water in this zoo. Excuse the language, but there is so much water in this zoo. And I'm actually, uh, I fear that I am never ever going to like find a way to cover all that up and make it useful. So here's what I'm doing with the plants. Like usually you have like one plant and it looks a little bit empty. So you rotate it and it gets much more volume. And I actually really like it that way. Also with the smoke effect, I feel like it's really mysterious and awesome and cool. And I kind of really like it. Also those are, yes, those are the bins that we're going for. They're kind of generic, but um, you know what? It works and that's what's most important. Now bear in mind there are going to be a lot of cuts because the habitat that I'm building for these, I, I believe they were from the giant tortoises. They were a lot of trouble with that. I'm just gonna lay it out to you, a lot, a lot of trouble with a giant tortoise. I couldn't get over it, but you know, um, I cut a lot of it out, especially with the barrier. I just, I didn't, 
didn't work out the way that I wanted it. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to build like, like a walkthrough habitat. And the way that I initially built it wasn't the way that it's going to work out. But I will show you that all when we get to there because I'm, walk I'm getting ahead of business because I forgot it actually left it in here as well. So apparently we're placing lights first, which is usually something I always do at the end of uh, a park because I don't want to bother with lights because I don't actually like it. So I do that plus all the markers of like um, where what animal is. I usually do that all at the end. But apparently I didn't do that at the entrance at the end. I did already did that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Wow. So right now we are making the pathway for the actual habitats. And we are going right up on the edge of the water. And we are going here. And when I was actually building this pathway, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with this habitat. And then I had like two separate green peas. And I was like, you know what? That path that goes straight ahead, I want to make that like the walkable area. So you'll see me placing the null barrier here. And um, it didn't work out the way that I wanted to, because apparently you can't place visitor gates when you've already placed the path. I never do visitor gates as anyway, so there, you see what I mean? Like I couldn't place it, so I had to remove it and it was a big hassle and then it still wouldn't work out. And I believe there is going to be a cut in a minute because, you know, it was just so darn annoying. So I was like, maybe it's the path. So then I had to place the gate there, which was really weird. Um, Anyway, like it was, it was weird, especially then with these. We need to have like the habitat gate in there as well. It was just, it was weird. There you go. Look, we fixed it now. Now we just need to pl place the barrier again. And I wanted to use the wooden barrier, and all of a sudden I couldn't use it. And then I had to go use the null barrier again. And then I actually, um, we went on making our own wooden barrier, which I'm actually quite happy about. I mean, I'm quite proud of it. Um, next week we are going to do the same with the other habitat that we are building. We are going to use a homemade fence and I'm actually really digging the homemade fences. I don't know why but I feel like it's more like my zoo and the way I want it to be. And not just um, plant zoo stuff that I happen to use but it's really the way I want it to be and it's the way what I want. I'm big on... Uh, apparently I'm very big on being the boss of this but you know what who even cares right so now we are just checking uh, for our tortoises and we are gonna place them in in a minute I believe so um, I did do some cutting here my initial idea was to have like um, this underwater walkthrough and then I realized tortoises actually couldn't do that so we are gonna make this little water area here and we are gonna actually put a I don't know what to call it is it a ferris wheel like the thing that works on water, you will see it in a minute. Anyways, this is going to be our barrier. And we actually, um, it is like 0 0.5 meter and we are gonna place it all around. And I believe that I cut it out and otherwise you will see me placing fences all around. And we are making sure that we're putting it exactly on the null barrier or just a little bit like next to it. So it may, just to make sure that the animals actually can't escape. That is, you know, quite important because apparently tortoises are really dangerous and everyone panics when a tortoise escapes. Although in real life, uh, you would probably be like chill. You go like, oh, look, there's a tortoise. Let's get it back to its habitat. But Planet Zoo guest, man. That's the thing I mean. Like, what is that? I forgot to name. I want to call it a Ferris wheel, but it's probably not named that. So whatever. I really wish like there, um, I'm using the animated and I really wish that the water would actually like walk through it and go over there and then again in the actual puddle. That would be pretty cool. So we are going to delete that one and use the animated one. I, I think it's absolutely cute. I, I love the way it looks. I love it. And I'm not sure if that's really like um, known and pronounced for this animal, but I, I quite I quite dig it. I think it's really adorable. And that is actually the most exciting thing in this habitat, obviously, um, they're just turtles, so... Or tortoises. I honestly don't know the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. I, I think they're just the same, or maybe tortoises are bigger. I have no clue, I probably should have googled that, but it just came to me that I don't actually know the difference. Good thing to notice that for this zoo, I did disable... Uh, disable um, 
zoo animal welfare. Just because I wanted to do like really creative stuff and I wasn't really able to do that. I have to make like um, arrangements for this animal actually to be happy. So I just made sure that they're always 100% happy. Also, if you can hear the vacuum in the background, I'm sorry. It is still downstairs at the moment. But when it goes like up the stairs, I will end this recording and come back after that. So there will be another weird cut, just so you guys know. So right now we're just making sure that the terrain is actually viable for these animals. And then I realized that I need to have like an animal um, shelter and the trace center to be able to place the animals in. So that is what we are gonna do now and poof, look, there it is. Everything is built. We are just gonna make some quickly, um, some signs on there so we know that they're actually, you know, legit and that we know what is where. And that is it for this section because then we are going back to the habitat, I believe. Honestly, can you, you can, guys can probably tell that I added this a long time ago and I don't really remember what's what. Oh, apparently we're going to stick with this, um, with this okay whatever all right so we are gonna make like a pretty like a little i want to call it a i want to call it a village but a little staff area just to make sure that they're nice i mean like the guests uh, need to like enjoy it and need to be happy about it but it's also quite important that the staff is actually happy i mean that should always be your number one priority as a zoo, like guests, well, actually, your number one priority should be animals. But after that, make sure your staff is happy because if your staff isn't happy, there will be some problems. I think we can all, like, be sure on that. If your staff isn't happy, things are going to escalate. And I believe it's like that in any working environment. And I don't know what I'm babbling on about. I'm extremely sorry. I'm just talking nonsense at the moment. I really, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what I did want. I wanted to ask you guys something. I wanted to. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted. Um, I looked at the channel ratings, and I'm actually really happy because I did my um, Woodland Zoo tour, and it got so many views, and I'm actually so surprised about that, and I'm really happy with it as well. So I wanted to thank you guys for watching it, liking it probably sharing it as well because there were a lot of people that actually looked at it and checked it out and I'm really really thrilled about it like I mean that out of the like the goodness of my heart which sounds a little bit weird but I really mean it I am really really happy with you guys like that you support it so like sometimes you guys comment you like and I really appreciate it also for all of you that like follow the, the YouTube channel I couldn't be more happier because that's all I really wanted. I want to share my creations with you guys and I want to build a community just for fun. Like I don't want money or anything with it. I mean, not gonna lie, if you get money with it, it's nice. But I really want to make this community work and make it grow. So I really do love channel recommendations. So if you have any ideas, like if you want to guys see more Planet Zoo and less Sims, let me know because at the moment... Um, I'm doing what I want to do, but I feel like if we're going to be a community, we need to obviously communicate and we need to find this similar ground where you get what you guys want and I get what I want to do and we need to find that. So if you want more Planet Zoo, if you want longer videos, if you want shorter videos, if you want me to talk less, I completely understand. Just let me know in the comments down below. There will also be like links to my social media where you can follow me. Um, one to my Twitter where I upload sometimes. I don't really tweet a lot. It's more like for special occasions. I'm there. I have a Discord channel where you get notified um, if I upload any videos. And I have two Instagrams. One personal where I don't really upload a lot except when I'm on holiday. And obviously with the entire Corona crisis, you can't go on holiday. So... There is that. Plus, I'm Dutch and uh, the Dutch people aren't allowed in any other country. So, you know, big hassles. And also a, uh, you uh, not a YouTube, a Instagram for my Sims, where I upload my Sims build. So if you, ooh, I dropped something. So if you are into Sims as well, um, you can check that out. <laughs> and last but not least, I also have a link to my Twitch, Twitch right there. And there's a link to my Twitch. Uh, I don't stream a lot, like I intend to start streaming again, but I really need to find the time uh, for that to do. But you can follow me there, um, you know, you wouldn't get notified unless I actually stream, so 
it's no harm and if you don't want to that's completely fine as well like don't feel forced to do anything just do what you want but at least i've said it and that's what is important so right now we are getting to the final few minutes of this uh actual video and i just want to thank you guys if you are still here on sticking around i really appreciate that and the final minutes of this video will consist of doing the outside of the habitat because we got the actual habitat and i just wanted to make sure that the outside looks just as nice so again we are working with the bamboo and i kind of got my uh, inspiration from jurassic park again with the scene for the toilet blocks and i was like yeah with that bamboo as well and it looked kind of similar and actually really liked the way that it looked so we are going to use the same panels as we did for the entrance and I quite like the way that it looks actually. I'm actually relatively happy with how it turned out. I again with all the uh, foliage at the end as well. I do have a feeling you will quite clearly hear the vacuum cleaner right now. So I'm going to end the video here because we're almost at the end already. Do make sure you stick by for the actual cinematics in a minute. And I will leave you guys with some music. And guys don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I hope you have an amazing day and I will hope to see you next time. <laughs> Bye.